So this is the project I decided to mess around with. I found this on Thingiverse and I wanted to give it a go for engraving or carving, whatever. So I downloaded the SDL file and I put it in uh, Desk Proto. And after, let me show you the parameters I got. For roughing, I'm using a ball no nose quarter inch diameter bit at a thousand millimeters a minute. Uh, finishing, I'm using a one millimeter diameter. It's actually not a ball nose, it's one of those tapered end mills, but this program doesn't have that in here, so I'm just using that. And generally, I don't use the contour, but I'm going to do it this time because these things are a pain in the neck to cut out if you use uh, too thick of a piece of wood. I'll show you what I mean in a little bit. Anyway, what it all translates to, this is what it looks like in lines of code. If you click on the simulation and calculate, shut off the lines of code, it shows you what the part will look like in wood. And we'll go downstairs now and see how it came out, if it's close. I wanted to show you the tools that I use. Um, both of these are quarter inch. One's a four flute, one's a two flute. I don't really see a big difference with these as far as finish goes. This one makes a lot more noise, whatever. Uh, this is what I use to do the profiling. So you can see his eyeball, a little slit in his eye. Back here is a gill, I think. I don't know. I'm not very good with uh, lizard anatomy, but whatever. Now this is the finished gecko. I think it came out really good. Uh, I didn't use a fine enough end mill to get inside the toes to clean it up perfectly but uh, good enough I call it a win now I want to explain a couple of things that happened to me um, well first of all I don't know if you guys have seen this but this is my dust shoe I try to take it off for video for the most part now <clears throat> I don't know if you guys know a lot about the electronics for these things, but I ended up making a really bad mistake. I ended up piggybacking a relay off of an output. Basically, I did one output and I piggybacked two relays to that one output and it ended up shorting out my CNC controller. Now, thankfully, I'm just using a cheap, you know, $15, $20 USB controller, and it wasn't the end-all, be-all for me. But I want to explain what happened so, you know, you guys don't make the same mistake. So let me show you. Now, in here, you can see the solid-state relay. You also see this relay. Um, so, a couple things. To turn this on, you have to jump S1 to COM, and that turns the spindle on. So, I have Mach 3 turning the spindle on via that way, and that's done by that relay right here. Uh, let me show you. So, you hit spindle on, and turns on. Now, 
what I tried to do, and here's where it gets semi-interesting. Uh, these relays, hold on, like this, cannot act like a switch, an on and off switch for a DC uh, mechanism if it's an AC relay. Now, what I mean by that, now follow me, the input is DC, obviously, 3 through 32 volts. That's normal. But the AC part is where it gets tricky. Because apparently this is a triac, or, yeah, I believe it's a triac. And what happens is, when this powers up, you could put an ohmmeter across these, and it's technically not touching. Now, I'm not good enough with electronics to know why that is or what's going on. But, suffice to say, I struggled with it for a little while, just trying to make a relay work like a switch. And then, after doing some research, I realized that you need a DC output relay to work like a switch. So, if you put DC voltage to this... This does work like an on and off switch for a DC item. Like a regular toggle switch. You need a DC output relay. Food for thought, in case you guys ever mess around with anything similar to, you know, what I'm doing. Uh, anyway, how I burnt it out was... I ended up piggybacking one output to two of the relay inputs and I'll I'll put a picture up so you can see what it did but and suffice to say it wasn't good so I ended up rewiring some of the stuff I put a new board in uh you know played around with it I still got some more work to do uh the shop vac that I have because it runs so much, I'm actually kind of concerned that, you know, they're not really meant to run for 8, 12 hours. So I'm going to put a fuse in line for the shop vac, just in case something happens to it. It doesn't blow my board or the relays or, you know, just in anything. I just want to make sure if the shop vac shorts out, it just trips a fuse and no harm, no foul. The last thing I want is my spindle shutting off and me not knowing it. And then coming down to a broken end mill and torn up piece of wood and who knows what. But, alright guys, that was it. Happy Valentine's Day for everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. And, uh, I'll catch you guys later.